everyone, so in this video we're going to be looking at the omnipotence of God and in particular the paradox of the stone. A paradox is something that is a contradiction. So the question is here, can God create a stone so heavy that he cannot lift it? So before we start to answer this question, we must first consider what is meant by the omnipotence of God. So two main philosophers put forward their views on this, Descartes and Aquinas. For Descartes, God has the ability to do anything and he can overcome the contradiction because he's perfect. For example, he can make square circles and he can make 2 plus 2 equals 5. So God can overcome any contradiction. For Descartes, any attempt to um, answer this paradox using logic is completely incoherent as you can't use logic to explain God because God can do the logically impossible and he can overcome any contradiction because he's, he's perfect. As Descartes said, the, a supremely perfect being. Therefore, Descartes' view on omnipotence doesn't seem vulnerable to the paradox, as he can comfortably answer yes without compromising the divine omnipotence. As you can imagine, if God is able to do anything and nothing is too much for him, then this raises the, the question of, then is God just a tyrant? Can he do anything that he wills, just arbi arbitrarily? Can he do anything? And obviously this raises implications for free will. Do we have free will or does God just will stuff to happen anyway? Aquinas takes a similar approach, but he says God can do anything that is possible, but he can't violate the laws of nature and logic. So for example, he can part the Red Sea, but he can't, as Descartes said, make two plus two equals five, because he can't deny the laws of logic. Aquinas' view also survives the paradox of the stone because although God can do anything possible, the whole paradox of the stone is just incoherent for him. It's an impossible feat. If God exists, then he can lift all stones. So the idea of a stone that God can't lift is just impossible because God can lift any object. So for Aquinas, the problem doesn't lie with God's omnipotence, it lies with an impossible object. Therefore, Aquinas can answer no to the paradox without compromising divine omnipotence. For some people, they could say that the paradox of the stone fails in, in um, showing that God doesn't exist because it can be solved. Another modern philosopher who puts forward his view is Richard Swinburne, and his view is that omnipotence means a being is omnipotent if there is nothing right now in this moment that he can't do. For Swinburne, God can only act within his nature. He can't do anything illogical, which is similar to Aquinas' view. God is an unlimited being, but in creating the stone, this limits his ability. So he is still omnipotent. He can create the stone as he's unlimited, but the, the stone makes him limited. Also similar to Aquinas, Swinburne says that the stone is an illogical object, so God can't do anything that isn't in his nature, and he can only do what is possible. So to lift an illogical object would be incoherent for him. It just doesn't make sense. So how can we put this into context? Well, if, if this contradiction, this paradox is true, then this raises implications for God's nature. If, if God isn't omnipotent, then this raises questions about, is he actually God? If, if he isn't omnipotent, then there must be a being above him that is fully omnipotent. It also raises a question of, what, what reason is there to act morally? If God isn't omnipotent, he can't forgive our sins anyway. So, what is the point of acting morally if our, our sins are never going to get for, forgiven? Um, and of course, if God isn't omnipotent, then this also raises questions about the afterlife and Judgment Day. Um, it's, it's a word called eschatology, which means the end of times. So different religions have different ideas about what happens after we die. But again, why should we act morally if, if this, this being cannot judge us anyway? If he isn't perfect, then who is he to judge anyone? However, if God isn't omnipotent, then this, this could answer the problem of evil because God can't possibly stop evil from happening because he doesn't have the power to. So 
you can see there are both strengths and weaknesses of God being omnipotent. So that's the end of this video. Um, it's a lot of content, but I hope I simplified it. I have also started a blog, which is revisionbuddy101.blogspot.com. I'll write all the information in the box. Um, but all the information in my videos will also be on the blog, in case you didn't catch anything. So, yeah, I hope you have a great morning, day, evening, and stay tuned.